Hi, everybody. If we haven't met, my name is Dr. Laura DeVoe. I am uh, one of the folks from the advisory board here with Building Era. I see some familiar faces. I also see some folks we haven't met before. I haven't met you before. Uh, so welcome. Um, if you are new to Build the Era, we are a grassroots organization uh, that is uh, here to uh, put forth educational opportunities and advocacy around transportation and the Department of Transportation. Uh, we are uh, volunteers. None of us are getting paid. Uh, we are living the dream on, uh, on the, the love of transportation infrastructure. And many of us came from the Pete Buttigieg campaign. Not all of us, believe it or not. There are some folks here who were supportive of other candidates. And then as Pete has moved into um, the DOT or uh, issues around infrastructure and transportation have become more centered. Uh, folks have found their way to us, which is great. So welcome. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, if you have not been to any of our previous events, or if you are a new member and you've only been to maybe one or two, um, I want to remind you that if you go to buildtheera.com, uh, you will see there uh, all of our social media accounts. And one of them is our YouTube page. Um, on YouTube, we have uh, all of our past events um, and they are recorded. So you can go back and watch them. Many of them feature Jonathan French, who is uh, uh, on the advisory board along uh, with Jeannie. Uh, and they are our resident um, transportation experts. Um, they literally work in transportation. They actually know all of this stuff. They talk in a language that sometimes I, I need to pull out some flashcards and figure out what they're doing, but they, they know this stuff very well. Um, and we are super blessed. Here's Jeannie uh, Condanza. So hello, Jeannie. Um, she is one of our other uh, experts. She's also our podcast host. Um, and we do some amazing stuff for this organization. And so we are super blessed to have uh, two people on our advisory board who are uh, knowledgeable in uh, transportation and infrastructure and have lived, lived the life, so to speak. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk to you about our very first call to action um, and something that you can all do to help us advance the bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill. Um, then I'm going to turn things over to Jeannie, who's going to uh, come to us with some transportation trivia, because we can never have an event without having a little bit of trivia. Um, and then we'll come back and, and uh, yep. remind you of the call to action. All right. All right. So uh, this is being recorded uh, for people who miss it. Uh, and typically we turn around the postings of the recordings and put them up on YouTube within 24 hours. So uh, 24 hours or so. So you'll, you'll uh, be able to share this with other folks. Um, so I'm going to do a screen share and we'll get started. Ooh, I need you to make me a, a host. We've done that right now. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, we I will share, and I'm just going to ask the folks be careful about putting themselves on mute. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, today's our very first call to action. I love a good call to action. Call to action means that you're actually doing something, um, and we need to pass this bipartisan bill. Um, we are doing an email campaign. I'm going to bring you to uh, our Action Network page to show you how it's done. Um, we have written the email for you. But first, before I take you there, I want to explain to you what happens when your email hits and makes it to Capitol Hill. Um, these are the six things that happen. Number one, a legislative correspondent downloads the message, okay? Um, and it, it kind of makes me laugh that we have to download the message, but there you go. There's the, the piece here. You got downloads message. The email sender is verified as a constituent. That's super important because some of you may be thinking, I live in a blue, blue, blue state or a blue, blue, blue part of my state. Um, maybe I'll say I live in West Virginia. No, don't do that, okay? Be honest, be who you are. Um, they are going to verify it. You don't wanna be flagged as someone who lies because that will hurt the overall campaign. So please make sure you do that. 
Emails are routed, printed, or tallied. Um, important and compelling emails are given to a legislative aid. That is super important because um, we're going to talk in a minute about how you make the email while we have written it for you. How can you make it more compelling? How can you make it stand out? Um, uh, so you can play with it a bit, which is important. Uh, unique moving emails are shared with the member. Um, for some of you, maybe you live in a part of the country uh, that uh, needs internet access. Um, maybe the broadband piece is, is really, really important to you in terms of your quality of life, in terms of your access to education or finding a job or doing a job. Maybe you live in a part of the country where you don't have clean water and you have to boil your water, drinking water all the time. Um, those are, are moving and compelling things to include. Um, you may be thinking, well, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I don't have those issues, but um, think about uh, what is going on in your state, in your part of the country, um, where this bipartisan bill will have a real impact on even just how much money you pay every year to fix your car. Um, because if you're driving down the road and you're always hitting potholes and you have to replace your tires or fix your suspension, that's important. Talk about it. Um, <clears throat> and then an email summary will be given um, before the vote. So in that regard, it's really good that to have more uh, emails going to the elected officials uh, so they could say, you know, actually, you heard from 100 people in your district on this, or you heard from 500 people in your district on this. So this is clearly something that matters. Um, so uh, they do do a tally and they give them an update. So I want to go um, to the actual letter campaign. When you go to uh, the Action Network, and I'm going to put the uh, actual link up in the chat so you can go there yourself. Um, <clears throat> you will see this. Um, you will put in your uh, your address. Actually, what will what you will see is this because I've already filled mine out. So you will see your street address. I'm not going to do this on uh, right now because I don't need the world to know where I live. Um, but <clears throat> you're going to put in your street address and your city and state. Once you hit start writing, it will then take you to this tab here. I live in Massachusetts, so you see that my senators are Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, and my rep is uh, rep, uh, Jake Oshenklaus. And what you will see when you open yours, when you, when you fill yours out and you move to yours, you will actually see is that each of your senators and your representative have different preferences in terms of how they want to get your information. So I'm going to call your attention to something here. Senator Markey wants to know my topic and then gives me a chance to give me my put my title in. Um, so he doesn't have infrastructure as an option. He does have transportation. So I'm going to collect that. For Elizabeth Warren, she wants my phone number, okay, which I just told the world my phone number. Um, so the I'm going to do my phone number here, and then you're going to do your letter topic. She actually does have infrastructure, but for some reason it's not in alphabetical order, um, which is which is odd. Um, but it is there, okay. So you're going to do that for Jake Oshenklaus. Um, he has a topic called transportation and public works. The reason I'm bringing this up is not every one of your senators and reps are going to have infrastructure. Um, most of them will have transportation. So put it under transportation. If they happen to have infrastructure, fan, fan freaking fantastic. Okay. Then you can start uh, doing some customization. I've already put, get the bipartisan infrastructure bill passed. I might even make it stronger, stronger worded than that. Okay. Um, but you can change it, uh, to be something I would recommend to make sure bipartisan infrastructure bill is in the subject. Um, it is already pre-populated with a, a standard subject. You can edit it, but I would leave bipartisan infrastructure bill in there. So they know what it's about from the subject line. Then you have your message, okay? And your message um, is already pre-populated. Jonathan uh, 
did uh, help us edit it and make sure it really kind of met the standards in terms of terminology, in terms of accuracy, and that sort of thing. If you want to, to uh, add some customization, I would add it right here after the Build the Era members um, or something of that nature, okay? Uh, you can add it after this, this paragraph and put it in right here. Um, and that way it speaks to your message. The other option is to lead with it, okay? So after this, after this paragraph, where it's an introduction to who we are as an organization, then put in your customized paragraph. Those would be the two places I would recommend. I wanna be very clear about something, okay? Um, I wanna be clear in that we have a situation with our, uh, with our, our membership or with, with people, not our membership, with people where they think, well, I live in a space where my vote, my, my, uh, I'm a very blue state. You still need to do this, okay? And I'm gonna talk in a moment about why, all right? Uh, so you're gonna hit send the letter and then after you send the letter, um, you will be given options on sharing, okay? Um, and you can share in a couple of ways. You can share on social media, you'll be able to share an email, um, and you can even uh, put the, put the uh, link into a, a text um, and text it off to your friends. Um, when you are sharing, don't just do a general share. It's already going to populate for you and say, I just did an action for the bipartisan bill. Help me do this. You can customize that um, and you can talk about why. We're asking you to put out there why this is a priority for you. We have someone on the call who um, is very involved in uh, regional rail. We have people on the call who are uh, in states. I know that uh, Kansas City is uh, in Kansas is a big deal right now in terms of the infrastructure bill. There's people here who have skin in the game and you need to start to leverage that skin in the game. Um, when you are sharing um, on social media, especially if you're on um, you know, Twitter or Instagram, be sure to tag um, us at Build the Era. All of our accounts are um, on our website um, and make sure you do that so we can boost your signal as well. Um, we want you to go the extra mile when at all possible. If you live in a place where you can turn on the water and people see that it's dirty water, do a video and say, hey, Senator, I just sent you an email. And this is why I sent you an email is because I want to be able to drink the water out of my tap and not have to boil it. Okay. You have a kid working, doing homework at home and constantly falling off the internet. Take a picture of the frustrated kid. Do whatever you have to do to get the word out in terms of why this is important to you because we want to hit 1,000 emails, okay? In order for us to get to 1,000 emails, you have to get other people to do it. If each of the people who have signed up to be on this call tonight, which is 45 people, actually gets five people to do it, we are well on our way, all right? Um, so I think we can make that happen. I want to take a minute, pull off of the slide, and I want to look right at you, and I want to see your faces while I'm saying this, is that I live in a blue, blue, blue state, okay? And I know Karen lives in the same state as I do, and there's a bunch of other Massachusetts people, and we may be sitting here, and we may be going, well, what the hell is this going to do? I already know Ed Markey's going to vote for it. I already know Liz Warren's going to vote for it. I already know Jake Oshenkloss is going to vote for it. Well, guess what? My email is going to be, hey, I know you're going to vote for it, but here's the thing. I need you to use your political capital to get other people to vote for it. And this may not be perfect. There is not a damn bill that goes through that's perfect. It is not time for perfection. It is time for action. I am too damn old to be dealing with this. Okay. We need to see things 
happen so that these, these advancements, these fixes, these, the momentum can actually get started. And you need to articulate that and say, look, I voted for you. I believe in you. I want these things to happen. But right now, nothing's happened for how long? It's pathetic. I live in, in the Boston metropolitan area. The last time I saw a major infrastructure package was the big dig. And that was because of Mike Dukakis. Okay. And, and he didn't even win. Okay. So what the hell? When are we actually going to get something done? And that's where even if you're in a blue, 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 blue place, put it out there. If you're in a purple place, make them, make it hurt. Make it hurt. Say, you know what? We need you to actually step in and step up. Okay. A good way to do that is to see if any of your reps have any earmarks in this. And while the earmarks may not survive, it's good to know if you actually have someone with an earmark. So my rep has an earmark. Um, and it's good to know that they're invested in the process. If they don't have an earmark, that tells you something. Jonathan's going to tell you how to find out if they have an earmark. So he's going to unmute and tell you. But go ahead, Jonathan. Give them the info. Sure. Um, I'm going to throw this in the chat. Um, it's the member designated projects link. And it's kind of convoluted because, um, of course, it's Congress. So, of course, it's convoluted. Um, they... Uh, they kind of put it in two different um, areas. So they've got basically a chart full of all of the projects that were submitted. And then if you look, there's a link in the actual bill um, or to, to the actual bill. And it, it starts on page 47 of all the projects that were actually included in the House Invest Act, which was the House version. And we'll talk about kind of how the sausage is made a little bit um, here in a second, but, um, and where, things are at, but that's, that kind of shows you the invest act really, you know, we'll talk about it, but um, that's kind of showing, you know, even Republicans put a bunch of earmarks in this thing. So they wanted projects and they wanted something to show that they did something. Right. So, you know, they, they, they have skin in this as well as Democrats. So it, this is a, this is a bipartisan effort. You have a bipartisan Senate bill that, uh, or Senate framework that, that folks want to support. Um, but this is that member designated projects will kind of show you what your rep um, has, uh, you know, tried to put in there. And those all kind of vary because some member designated projects, they actually coordinate with the, with the state agencies and the local agencies. And some just kind of put it in because their constituents want it or they want it. So um, it kind of varies all across the board. But that's a good place to start to show exactly, you know, what your rep has submitted and, and what they want to get out of this thing. Jonathan, you're going to put that up in the in the chat, right? It's it is there. It is there. Yeah. Why can't I the, see? The link is there, and um, if we can, uh, uh, Laura, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Laura take a break for a bit. Because um, I'm about to have a stroke. Okay. She's so delivered the rage. Do this. Okay. <laughs> so I need all of you to capture that I, in your emails in your own unique way. Okay. So. Um, uh, while we let her cool down, um, I'm going to ask Jonathan and Jeannie to sort of tell us where the heck are we? Why does Pete keep having to go out on the road and do all of these interviews? Um, why do all of the secretaries involved in this? Um, why is there all this talk? Where is the action? What can we do? Um, how do you explain this to people? If you're, we're at a cocktail party, we've all had a drink or our favorite beverage. How do you explain this to us? I'll let you kick things off, Jeannie. Oh, okay, great. Um, well, first of all, uh, first of all, <laughs> I, I would say, you know, we structured these, this whole, Jonathan and I are, transportation nerds, but we focused this on things that we thought would be, you know, touch uh, all of our lives. I think the, the, in four areas, we talked about safety, social equity, climate, and jobs, jobs, jobs. And 
and to their credit, the uh, bipartisan bill, you know, after looking at what ASCE thought was purely infrastructure, the American Jobs Plan, which I thought was actually brilliant um, for a 15-year plan, what the GOP came back with, which was, uh, are you serious? And then the Invest Act, which you know has has pieces of it, but this, the bipartisan uh, package has a lot and. Maybe it's not all, but it has a lot of the things that we thought were just really, really, really important. So you're not going to find social equity and uh, and restorative justice in the GOP plan at all. But I, I think it's you know critical. We are at a point. We are at an apex right now where social justice and and equity are critical. Um, safety is always important. And then I will say something. I think the most important thing, it's a hundred, it was 103 degrees here two weeks ago. The climate is, if it's not compelling you to act on, on transportation right now, nothing will. Nothing will, no, nothing will compel you. And it is the most important reason that we need to do something about transportation right now. I talked to my kids and I asked them, you know, how, why haven't you thrown us all into the ocean? Because we're not doing enough as adults. Uh, on climate, if if we love our kids, we would we would you know act yesterday uh, a long time ago on on climate, and for the first time, uh, for the first time I've ever seen, the GOP is not bringing snowballs to the you know house floor. They are not fighting back on this. They are finally um, tacitly accepting climate as a compelling reason. So. So we're seeing it, and I, I think it's, you know, now is the time. I like the bipartisan package because it does, it includes parts and pieces, not all of it, but parts and pieces of all the things that we thought were really, really important, and especially the things that get us uh, part of the way on climate. Not, not enough, but you know, part of the way. Jonathan, I'm gonna. Yeah, so we're, as long as we call climate nature, we'll get the GM, GOP on board. So we're good there, because <laughs> um, everything's nature-based. So as long as it's nature-based and not climate-based, we can we can actually have a dialogue, I guess. Um, and just to kind of you know even expand on Jeannie's point, I mean we just got a tropical storm up here in Maine. We got deluged with rain, and we're dealing with brown tail moth infestation because we didn't have enough rain during the spring that usually kills them. So you know we're it's, it's all over the place. You know just this is this is just kind of unprecedented times. So you know we you know, people are seeing the, the, these effects, but as far as kind of where things are at, I mean, we mentioned the Invest Act. Uh, the Senate has their own bill that, that passed through committee. I don't know if it actually got a vote on the floor yet. Um, but so you've got these two House and Senate packages and neither of them are gonna go anywhere. And then you have this bipartisan infrastructure framework. And what that is, is it's essentially what they've agreed to is to have no user fee spending for anything above and beyond the baseline. And what they're using as the baseline is this reauthorization, which is going to be coming out of both Senate and House bills. They're gonna have to figure out how to take both of those bills, merge them together for a reauthorization, and then take the bipartisan infrastructure framework and combine that with that. So you're going to have essentially one big package with reauthorization plus this additional spending. The reauthorization is actually going to be paid with user fees. So that that's just we're, we're going to keep paying the gas tax. That's just the way it is. Congress really hasn't. But it, I will say in both bills, um, both the Senate and the House bill, they have a pilot for a for a, a, a user fee, a, a vehicle miles traveled user fee. So they're looking at that and a national pilot, I mean, that's pretty groundbreaking. So my guess is that's where they're looking. They're looking to continue and all the testimony led up to this, the fact that the importance of user fees to continue to support the system. So, you know, Republicans and Democrats have bipartisan kind of support for that, um, you know, in, in the moderate lane, I should say, kind of on the extremes. I think there's, you know, there, you know the thinking's a little different, but there is bipartisan support for user fees still, both the Invest Act and the uh, Senate bill both involve user fees to pay for that baseline spending. 
but the bipartisan infrastructure framework does not. I mean, there's a whole smorgasbord of different little things in there. Um, you know, some are just some are kind of on paper. They they seem to generate the funding, but um, you know, they but they were able to come up with something that did not raise the gas tax and did not you know raise taxes on wealthy people. So it, you know, that's kind of a rarity to find find that compromise. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we really do need an overhaul. We do, we, we got to solve the highway trust fund and, but this package really isn't going to do that, but it's got a lot of bits and pieces that can lead toward that. So, you know, when we talk about this whole package, I mean, I don't know what they're going to call it, <laughs> you know, it's because we've, we basically got this bipartisan, you know, everybody's calling it BIF now. <laughs> we, we had the AJP, the American jobs plan. Now we have the bipartisan infrastructure framework. So you'll see, you know, when Pete's going out there, I mean, I think that that's what he's going to be selling is the bipartisan infrastructure framework. So that's what we've kind of shifted to. And that's what our, our action is essentially a, you know, unnamed generic bipartisan infrastructure bill, because we know that's coming. And then the whole second piece of this whole thing is what they're calling the human infrastructure bill. That's where you have, you know, all of your um, the climate piece of it that doesn't get put into the bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill, and then you've got, um, you know, the, the veterans um, home uh, renovations, um, you know, all of the the uh, child care, um, care, all of yeah. the um, yeah um, pre-K, all of the stuff that President Biden wants to do for human infrastructure would be in that package. So that would be the reconciliation package that Republicans will probably not vote, not have one single vote for. So, Jonathan. but they're, they're looking to get basically both of those through, but it's really that bipartisan infrastructure framework combined with the reauthorization uh, mashup of the House and Senate bill um, that we're gonna see moving forward. Jonathan uh, and Jeannie, I have a question for you. Um, if we're writing letters where, you know, we're going to tonight, we're going to uh, be writing letters. Are we focusing on the, the call to action for our energy is to support the framework? Is the reconciliation something completely separate of what we're, of what we're advocating for? Because that's going to happen amongst Democrats uh, by itself. Do I have that right? Or. So the, um, what we're, we're calling for a support of the BIF, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Framework. And we don't know what's in that. Uh, it's a kind of, it's a framework, it's a concept, but it does include a lot of the things that I think are really like clean water, um, wastewater, you know, debt refund, there's some other creative ideas. Um, it doesn't include like uh, Jonathan said, more structures and houses and things like that. That will be later. And that'll probably be only passed by Democrats. Um, like a lot of these bills. What, what I think a lot of the, um, the uh, uh, Susan Collins uh, and, uh, and her friends, Lisa Murkowski, wanna be able to go back home and say uh, to their constituents is, I voted for the BIF, I supported the BIF and the BIF should move forward. And the BIF bipartisan should, you know, have more than 50 votes on the Senate side. It should have uh, you know, greater support on the House side. And that's a win across the board for everyone. Uh, the other, you know, the fact that Biden said right out of the shoot, like, oh yeah, and I'm gonna get this other package with that, uh, that kind of flew in the face of a lot of those Republicans who were, didn't want that to be said out loud. What they want is they wanna go home with a win and they wanna go home to say that they've actually voted for something and saying that they voted for the BIP is good and taking all that other stuff out and forcing that to just a you know a Democrat only thing, that's fine. And these Republicans can't say that they were part and party to this master scheme of getting the infrastructure plan passed and then following it with with uh, all of this care stuff. They they want to be able to just go home and say, I got us some pork. So that's yeah. that's. And, and, and it's only yeah, yeah, it's only certain Republicans too because again. Uh, Mitch McConnell is against anything Everything. that's going to go through. He's going to vote against the infrastructure. He's going to vote against the framework. I have no doubt in my mind, um, you know, that final piece of it. But I think they, they will get to 60 and maybe some more, um, you know, to get it through. But they're, they're, they're barely going to get 
over 60, if, if that. So, um, but I think they're going to get, they're going to get it to the point where they can call it bipartisan for sure. Um, because that was the whole point of the framework and getting that, but there is going to be a contingent of Republicans, including, you know, the leader McConnell that go completely against it just because they want to make things as difficult as possible for anything to get through. They can't let Biden have one win, not one right. freaking win, nope. but not, a bipartisan, not, for, not for election season. Right. But for a bi bi bipartisan for many Republicans and all Democrats, bipartisan is a win. And it's a win yep, for Biden. Absolutely. If he gets this passed, I think it's a huge win to say, yes, mm -hmm. I waited. I waited as long as I could and you know, got this through. Yeah. And the other thing we talked about earlier is that um, the Invest Act has a bunch of earmarks in it. Um, and the thing with the Senate bill is it doesn't. So the Senate, you know, there was talk about potentially them having earmarks, but they decided not to not to waive that rule that they had passed that they wouldn't do earmarks anymore. The House actually did. So the question is, when they get to conference together on these two bills, you know, are they going to have earmarks or are they, aren't they? And that's going to be something to watch um, during this whole process as well, because um, most of the, the Senate Republicans hate earmarks. The House Republicans are a lot more open to them even though they voted against legislation that has them that they put them in. But uh, that's, that's the political theater that we're, that we're privy to. But um, still, it's, that's going to be fascinating to watch is do the earmarks actually survive the, the conference process? And, and absolutely, truth be told, earmarks don't exist. You know, that's one, that's one way. But these grants that we just submitted, that I submitted yesterday, Raise grants, big dollars, you know, twenty billion dollars or twenty million dollars per project. Those are, they don't sound like earmarks. But if I don't have the congressional support from uh, the senators and and my representative, that's their way of getting an earmark. And and you can't you can't get anything. You can't get it. You know, there's criteria with these things. It's a test. That doesn't mean anything unless I get you know the congressional uh, delegation in support of a project. Just just the way it is. And that's just, you know, it's just another way of earmarking a project. I, I had to force my folks to get those letters. <laughs> and then part of the bill, too, part of both bills, the Senate and House bill too, um, there's uh, actually uh, what's called a PROTECT grant, which is climate resiliency. So that's, uh, it, it was interesting to see that in both bills as well. So that may survive the conference process. We'll, we'll have to see. Jonathan and Jeannie, would you recommend that um, we go through the uh, outline of what's in the framework to identify what maybe some of the causes that are most important uh, to, you, uh, to you, where you live? And again, as Laura said earlier at the top of the hour, it may not just be an issue for you, it may be an issue for your community uh, or your state. Um, would you think that's a good place to start uh, to, to identify some of the things that you want to see supported? I don't know if, you know, I don't know that we know, like Jonathan knows what the earmarks are, but I don't know if we know, there, there's a lot of um, behind the scenes in these numbers, but for example, like transit and electric vehicles, you know, the GOP plan had nothing, nothing, <laughs> but ASCE had, you know, a big, huge number and invest, you know, the American Jobs Plan had a big number and this bipartisan plan has a big number for transit and electric vehicles, electric buses. High speed rail is another one that, you know, that's when we say high speed rail, passenger rail, that kind of thing, Amtrak, th there was money for that. And, um, you know, the GOP plan had none. So that if that's important to you, the road and bridge replacement is really important um, uh, and bridges. Yeah, 66 billion for passenger freight rail is huge. I mean, that's unprecedented. Yeah, that's that's really big. And that's, you know, that's, that's a, uh, Texas, if we get Texas, that would be great because um, they have a big um, high-speed rail project. Electric electrification of airports, that was good. Um, what's the other one? Clean ports and water. What about rate? drought, uh, fire, and flood resilience? Uh, that, there was a resilience in there. So $47 billion for resilience, which the AJP had resilient, specific resilience things, and you know nobody else really addressed that. And that's, that's like 
I'm not going to just build the wall in Miami this high because that's where the waves are today, knowing that it's going to be two feet higher <laughs> because climate change is going to bring the, you know, the need for a, a storm wall higher. Broadband is in there. Um, and that's, you know, that's critical. Yeah, that's quite a quite a uh, commitment because they're they're saying that every single American will have mm -hmm. access to broadband with this plan. So that's pretty huge. And that that plays well in Alaska and it plays well in rural, you know, Wyoming. It plays well in some of those Republican red states. Yeah. And the elimination of every single lead pipe in this country. That's huge. I mean, you think of Flint, for instance. I mean, and we I think we all saw that uh, video, that viral video that the White House sent out about, uh, you know, that that I forget the, the I think it was it Kentucky, I think, mm -hmm. um, where. Yeah, they, just, they, they couldn't. They couldn't <laughs> drink the water, shower in the water, anything. It was just. It was off. I mean, this is the United States of America, and you were seeing or, that. I mean, that's like something out of a third world country. And 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 the other thing in the uh, bipartisan bill is they're also being like supposedly fiscally prudent. So, for example, they're talking about debt refinance. Um, so, using debt mechanisms instead of. Uh, so you can borrow money, like my friend, if you were there to hear Mike Pillsbury talk about, you know, borrowing money and paying it off over time, um, uh, leftover money from these other uh, plans, um, you know, uh, taxes, increasing taxes, <clears throat> not on the wealthy, of course, and then, um, um, and then savings on some of these other things, public private initiatives, uh, leftover toll dollars you can use. Um, so it's just you know, it's like making sure we use every penny uh, wisely. So it's not just a big spend bill. So they're sounding, you know, fiscally responsible. One of the things I think we're going to try to do as a group for you is, you know, uh, we are forever going to Jonathan and Jeannie saying, well, what's your take on this? What's your take on this? We're seeing the same headlines you are. We're seeing Bernie Sanders making, you know, inroads trying to work with you know republicans getting you know we see all of the moving parts um we will continue uh as we have been doing to keep you informed keep you engaged and and let you know you know to try to amplify as things start to firm up so so while we can't answer every question today mostly because i don't think jonathan or Jeannie have a crystal ball or a direct line into any of these um, but they do know uh, I, I have listened to them now at each of these sessions and the things they talked about three months ago have remained relevant and important and are listed in this plan still now. Yeah, so, I think we're going to be looking from what, um, you know, Le uh, Leader Schumer has said, I think we're going to be looking at, um, you know, in August, you know, in uh, all the way into August, he's been telling you know, senators to be prepared to work through the August recess to get this thing done. Um, because reauthorization does expire um, at the end of September. So, or the, the FAST Act extension expires at the end of, uh, end of September. So they, they really do need to, they, they could either pass a continuing resolution or they could pass something that reauthorizes it for, you know, years to come. So. Great. And, and yeah, they keep kicking it down the road because they know that the gas tax is eroding and they need to really think about something else, but. You know, uh, I, I keep thinking about what if they had to not reauthorize the FAST Act when Trump was president. I mean, it's just a horror <laughs> scenario. <laughs> so, do we have a uh, little some, some trivia? Uh, do we have a little? <laughs> <laughs> we have prizes. No, okay. <laughs> Here, I'm going to give you some trivia. Trivia. Well, let's see. Um, oh, I'll give you a couple of myths and facts. Infrastructure is only things you can drive a car on. That's a myth. That's a myth, right? Uh, according to the online Oxford, that because that's what you heard the Republicans saying right away. Oh, you know, that's not infrastructure. That's not roads and bridges. According to online Oxford, infrastructure is the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities, buildings, roads, power supplies, needed for the operation of a society or enterprise. So our infrastructure makes it possible for our society to have access to opportunities that make us productive. This should include things like movement of goods on trucks and rail and ships and all the things. So 
hooey on that and debunk that myth. Uh, but now I'm going to do some trivia. Why is transport such an important topic when discussing climate? Your choices are um, mobile sources, transportation accounts for 28% of all carbon emissions in the United States. Changing technology, that's number one. Two is changing technology and behavior away from traditional fossil fuels is within reach. Number three, industry is finally responding by bringing zero emission vehicles to market. We saw it at the Super Bowl. <laughs> and four, all of the above. Four. <laughs> 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 So easy. Uh, uh, You've trained this what, group well. <laughs> vision zero is when your vision declines to worse. That's number one is when your vision declines worse to, uh, than 2020 vision. Number two, vision to eliminate all traffic signals down to zero. No traffic signals. Number two. Three, the inability. So, to, <laughs> that's Jonathan. <laughs> number three, inability to see anything and therefore should limit dri driving. And number four, the ambitious goal and action strategy to eliminate all traffic related deaths by 2030 or some other date certain. So number, oh yes, <laughs> that's vision zero. Uh, what is the FAST Act and should it be extended? Mm. Uh, FAST Act is that funding authority uh, authorization that funds surface transportation programs that's number one. The current name of uh, number two is the current name of the Highway Trust Fund that has been funded through the same 18 cents uh, for gas on gas act since 1993. Uh, number three, uh, the inequitable funding program <laughs> that impacts charges more to vehicles and rural areas as they use more gas. And number four, all of the above. So it is number four. Okay, what is net zero? We love zero in transportation, don't we? Uh, not, what is net zero? So num net zero one, adopting a goal and action strategy to reach a stage of no new net new emissions uh, over some baseline by 2050. That's number one. Number two, a new basketball scoring system. It's a practice set for nothing but net baskets. That's number two. Uh, the trial, number three is the trial name of the fishnet stocking company's first test stocking. <laughs> Number four, the secret name of Coke Zero's early beta version. So what is net zero? Everybody get one? Yeah. Adopting a goal and action strategies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to reach no uh, net, no new uh, emissions. And then, okay, here's one for Kenzie. Uh, who and what is Zev? Z-E-V. And can they help us out? Uh, number one, ZEV is the new super secret mascot Kenzie is working on. <laughs> number two, ZEV includes electric and hydrogen fuel cell and are being developed for all transport modes. Even aviation is looking at sustainable aviation fuels. That's number two. Number three is zero emission vehicles can make a substantial change in emissions for all modes of transportation and for all of the above, we hope. Four, all of the above. Four. Yes. Kenzie. <laughs> Zev. <laughs> we need a Zev. <laughs> uh, then the last one. This is for Jonathan. Why do we love roundabouts? <laughs> we do love roundabouts, right? Uh, because number one, there are no mechanical moving pieces to break or that need to be replaced, retimed, as there are with traffic signals. Number two, because they are repped by Rhonda. That's number two, you know, Rhonda, Rhonda about. Uh, number three, they can almost eliminate fatal and injury accidents, especially angle and head on. Number four, they can reduce emissions because they reduce speeds and vehicles are not stopped and waiting. Number five, uh, they reduce speeds of vehicles, making it a safer environment for pets and bikes too. And number six, all of the above. Numbers. <laughs> All of the above. Okay, that's it for me. <laughs> you guys are good. We've come a long way since our first meeting. I'm very impressed. I love Laura. trivia. That's the best. Oh my God. You guys are awesome. All right. So 
part of the reason this group makes me uh, brings me joy is because we have knowledge, we have uh, fun, and we have uh, action. And so now it is time to take action. Um, and what? Yes, whimsy. Thank you, whimsy, whimsy. whimsy. Okay. Um, I need you to all promise me something. Scouts honor. Okay, scouts honor. I got thrown out of Girl Scouts, so I don't know if I want to be putting up. I refuse to learn how to sew. Long story. Um, anyway, so I got thrown out of Girl Scouts, but that was the 70s. All right. But I need your Scouts honor. I need your BTE honor. I need you to say, I am going to get out there tonight. I am going to write that email. Um, I'm going to make it intentional. I am going to talk about how it matters to my community, why I need uh, my elected officials to get behind this. Um, and if we put this in perspective, if uh, there's 30 people on this call, if 30 people do this, they get five people to do one, uh, that gets us to 150. If those 150 then get five people to do one, Okay, that gets us to 750. If those 750 actually get five people to do an email, that gets us to a lot more than that. Um, 750 times <laughs> five is 3750. I was a journalism major for a reason because they told me there'd be no math. Um, and so when you look at this in the in the big perspective. One of the things that we did in uh, one of the first uh, organizing uh, information sessions we did, one education sessions we did was on relational. And for those of you who went through the Pete Buttigieg campaign, Pete, people do relational better than anybody. Um, now we are now some of our communities are now opening up more. Uh, we are able to visit with friends and family again. We are able to get people in our homes or in our backyards or meet at a coffee shop and tell people what you've been doing. What have you been doing during the pandemic? Did you save democracy? Did you move things forward? in terms of your own town or your state? Did you get behind a candidate and made sure they won? Are you still working on a project that has been just stalled and stalled and stalled in your state? Okay, because of inaction down in Washington and you're now making another effort in another way? Tell them. Government, that works changes people's lives. This isn't just about roads and bridges. This is about changing lives. Our children's lives, our grandchildren's lives. It's about making sure that we are doing the best by our communities. We need to show ourselves for who we can potentially be, which is people who don't just think about themselves. We're thinking about everybody. I don't buy this argument that we're better than this. Okay. I, my argument is we will be better than this. And we will only be better than this when we all join together and get shit done. You can absolutely make a difference. My last point is this, if you actually hear back from one of your representatives, please let us know because we want to hear about it, okay? Um, but that's a success story. And if you do something super awesome and you think it should be shared with other people, let us know too, all right? I have great faith in all of you. I want you to channel your inner Laura DeVoe and say, who am I going to cuss out today? Who am I going to make <laughs> suffer today? Who am I going to get out there and just say, I am done with this. I am not playing anymore. I am tired of going through, uh, you know, redirections of traffic and 
the your train's not running and nothing going on time and dirty water and no internet, you know, all of those things matter. And I want you to get out there, bear your soul and write those emails. And that's it. Laura, I would add to, um, you know, Pete and the other uh, cabinet that's in cabinet secretaries are out there on the road, uh, really selling this. Use what they're doing and leverage it. Share that on your social media. Uh, you know, it's easy enough to post a link. If one of them is in your state, uh, amplify that message and let your, you know, add that, connect that to your overall message of why you're supporting and fighting for this. Well, it is, we have a few minutes as if anyone has any questions for Laura or Jonathan or Jeannie. If not, we will excuse you a couple moments early. Um, the time you spent with us is appreciated. We know your time is valuable. We appreciate you spending it with us. I do and, see uh, uh, Foxy has her hand up. Ah. Quick question. Foxy, what's your question? Does anyone happen to know if there's any or what kind of pork is built into this so far? I'm going that's to the $1.2 trillion question, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's, what we're, that's what I was talking about is we really don't know what is going to be in this final package because that's going to get hashed out when they put everything together. Um, and during that conference process, of course, that the people in the room, whoever is making those decisions on, on those two, on those committees that are getting together and, and trying to sort out what's, what this bill is going to look like, they're the ones that are coming up with what gets put into this. And I know that there's a whole lot of folks on the house and the Senate side that have their pet chat, their, uh, pet things that they want to put into this. And we just, we don't know what that's gonna look like yet. So I'm sure that there will be efforts to do that, but we'll, we'll see, you know, I, again, I think this is, you know, this is gonna drag into August. So we'll just have to wait and see kind of how the two sides get together and uh, you know, what the final product is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and I'll just say there's, there's not enough money in this plan to not have stuff left on the cutting room floor. There's going to be stuff that every somebody wanted or is very well deserving, very very well deserving. Probably going to bridge, going to fall down, going to end up on the cutting room floor. But if you have a project you love, and you you know you think it must be done, uh, and uh, or or a danger or anything like that, I think it's you know it, that include that in there as well. But also like these other things, like you know this is the first time they've had a neighborhood restoration, bought a little pot of money to knit neighborhoods back together that have been historically, you know, impacted by, by infrastructure or high speed rail, things like that. Those things are so important. Electrification, moving us away from uh, fossil fuels that, you know, that's built in and that's something that we should all be cheering forward, whether it's uh, our pet project or not. Well, fantastic. If there are no other questions, again, thank you for your time. And uh, we will be in the email to you, but you and more importantly, we'll be in the email to your elected officials. If you have any questions as you um, go into the Action Network on there, uh, you know, tweet at us, email us, text us, <laughs> uh, yeah, put it in the Slack. One way or the other, one of us will get right back to you. Uh, to answer your question okay so don't let anything scare you away from this thank you folks have let's a fantastic crush that evening. thousand goal let's do it come on let's everybody. do it and let's and laura's buying the first round if that happens okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you folks have a great evening bye-bye